You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the show Jackie Bunyan, who is the director of American Citizens Abroad. American Citizens Abroad has actually been on the Goldstein on Geld show a number of times. I hope you've heard those previous interviews with Mary Louise Serrato and Anna Horning Sukup. And Jackie, now it's a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for having me, Doug. So you've really been an advocate for Americans living abroad, having been outside the United States for how long now? Uh, 48 years. Wow. And you also recently authored ACA, America Citizens Abroad, proposal for residence-based taxation. That's right. That's correct. What's all that about? Well, residence-based taxation is, is actually nothing more than, than recommending that the United States adopt the system that every other country in the world applies. Uh, you, the United States is unique in its citizenship-based taxation. And what it means is that Americans who are residing overseas would be taxed the same way that currently non-resident aliens uh, under, under U.S. tax jargon uh, are taxed. In other words, there would be an automatic uh, withholding on U.S. Uh, source income and uh, taxes on, on anybody who would have active income in the United States residing overseas would have to file. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are several aspects to it. But it basically means that, that people would, overseas would not have to file the 1040 in principle, nor would they be a, a subject to the FATCA reporting requirements of the banks or on, their, on the 1040, nor would they have to report the FBAR. In other words, they would be treated just like foreigners who are living overseas. That, of course, sounds very good. And as an American who is now living overseas, I would love that. But what benefit does the United States have for not collecting tax from people like you and me? Well, precisely, we believe that residence-based taxation will actually bring in more revenue to the United States uh, than the current <laughs> system. Okay, how does the math work? <laughs> the, current, the current system of citizenship-based taxation is an anomaly because the United States has to recognize foreign countries to have the first right of taxation, and therefore foreign tax credits are applied. And they also allow the foreign and income exclusion because they recognize that for Americans to be competitive in certain countries, this is an essential. And the upshot is that 82% of Americans who are filing their taxes do not owe any U.S. tax. You're saying 82% of Americans living outside the United States don't owe any tax? That, that are filing U.S. taxes do not owe any U.S. tax. US tax. That's right. That's when they, who live abroad? Who live abroad. That's right. And our estimates in our, in our, in our paper... Um, having looked at all the information available on the, uh, publicly on the websites of the IRS and, and the statistics, we estimate that the revenue coming from Americans who are residing overseas, excluding U.S. military personnel and individuals working for the embassies who are in a different category, I'm talking about private American citizens overseas, the revenue is probably ranging from 3 to $6 billion. That range is very large, and the reason is that there are different sets of statistics which come up with completely different numbers. Um, and one of, our, one of our aims of our paper is to, to try and get our proposal scored. It would have to be scored before it would be uh, accepted anyway. So three to six billion dollars of tax revenue comes into the United States from Americans who live overseas. That's not, I mean, it may not be a huge amount of money, but that would certainly buy a few F-35s. Well, not that many. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. It's the small, small rounding error of 1% of the U.S. budget. It's totally insignificant. We believe that residence-based taxation will bring in as much money, starting at the $6 billion level, the high level. We think it will bring in close to $8 billion a year. Uh, and in addition, the transition phase would probably bring in a one-time additional amount. So that we're talking over 10 years of at least 20 to $30 billion dollars. Just to clarify, you said if residence-based taxation, and basically everyone in America who's living there is paying taxes, so that's, we're not talking about that. We're only talking about sending a letter to all of us who live overseas saying from now on you don't have to file or pay? 
Well, that would be wonderful if, if it would be that simple in the implementation. <laughs> the implementation would be a little more complicated than that. Mm-hmm. Um, it just seems as though people like us have no representation on the Hill. You know, why do they care about what, what we think? If the system's working okay, why bother to change well, it? Well, the, the, the real fact of the matter is that the system is not working okay. Citizenship-based taxation is extremely costly and heavy for the, for the filers overseas. It's very heavy administratively for the IRS, and it's well known that uh, many, many Americans overseas are not filing income taxes. A large, many of them, because they are, they're not even simply not aware of the requirements. You know, many have, were born in the states of foreign parents and moved back to their home country when they were two years old. They've lived their whole lives overseas. They, doesn't, it never occurs to them that they should be filing U.S. taxes. They're never getting any services from the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, there are many instances uh, of this kind of what they call accidental Americans. That's one of the, the reasons. The other is that many people, why should you have a heavy administrative system to have everybody do this complicated filing when, when 82% of the people don't owe any taxes? And, and unfortunately today, with the citizenship-based taxation coupled with FATCA regulations and the pressure coming from banks, in banks being shut off from Americans, American citizens overseas are increasingly being forced to renounce their citizenship in order to live a normal life overseas. That's why it's not working. And that's why FATCA, on top of citizenship-based taxation, has really become the disaster. It's really the the straw that's broken the camel's back. (laughs) I see. We are talking with Jackie Bunyan, who is the director of American Citizens Abroad. She heads up a tax team on the executive committee there. And in fact, she has uh, authored the recent proposal for residence based taxation, uh, Jackie has a number of colleagues, two of whom, Mary Louise Serrato and Anne Horning Sukup, have been on the Goldstein on Gelt show before, and in fact have uh, contributed to the new book, which is coming out, The Expatriate's Guide to Handling Money and Taxes, which I encourage everyone to read to learn more about this. Uh, check that out at expatguidetomoney.com. Jack, I'd like to follow up on something you started about saying, which is FATCA itself the United, the people who wrote the FATCA legislation would argue that they're just trying to get the money launderers to come out of the woodwork, and this is a model for the IRS to find those people. How does that connect with citizen-based taxation? Because that could also be going after a, a U.S. resident citizen who is hiding money offshore. Well, the, I, th- the, I think the original impetus for the passage of FATCA was precisely the uh, the, the American residents who are, were hiding assets overseas. This, this legislation, it was almost the perfect storm that came up. You had the UBS case, and uh, that le- raised a lot of political ire in, in, uh, in Congress. And to the higher bill, they just, whoever was, had prepared this, and there's a big mystery as to who, but there was certainly Treasury was involved, and it was many years of effort, I think. They pulled this off the shelf, and it was never discussed in Congress. The whole origin of FATCA is very dubious. It was sold as going after tax cheats. The problem is that because Americans tax Americans also who are residing overseas, and I, I repeat, that's the only country that does this, then it automatically implies that all people overseas, by necessity, have to have foreign bank accounts, get pulled into this whole fact of reporting. Well, if they would anyway have to report these accounts, I understand having personally filled in FBAR and FATCA type uh, forms as well. But at the end of the day, you have to look up these accounts anyway. And is it just, is the problem that it's just an extra form you have to file? No, it's much more than that. Uh, Problem is that banks are, because of the the FATCA reporting requirements are different from FBAR. FBAR is only the individual who reports to the IRS. FATCA requires the foreign financial institutions to become arms of the IRS because they are required under, under the threat of serious legal considerations and serious withholding taxes to report to the IRS on anybody, any American who has an account overseas or over a certain threshold. And hey, although it sounds a little bit big brotherish, is there anything, if we just look at the United States Treasury as trying to maximize its income, why wouldn't they do that? Well, that's why, that's why they're doing it, but it's, it's, they're looking for the reporting to be able to prevent tax evasion. That's their goal. Actually, FACTA has been very effective now because they've combined it from the point of view of the IRS because they've combined it with the series of voluntary disclosure programs. And the the very wealthy Americans who were hiding assets overseas recognized that that program allowed them to come clean. Uh, The problem is that they've had a a one-size-fits-all 
uh, in their solutions. And it's extremely penalizing for Americans overseas who have not been reporting to try to get into the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen a lot of people dealing with that. In fact, there's a whole section in the book that I mentioned before just about how to deal with that amnesty program and how to get yourself back on the up and up with the IRS. Mm -hmm. Jackie, we're, we're running out of time, but I just want to ask, when you were in Washington talking to them about the, the, uh, the residence-based taxation, what did you feel? you think there's a possibility we're going to get there, or is it just a nice discussion topic? We were pleasantly surprised by the reception in the congressional offices. Of course, we only talked to staffers. But what we found were two things. Number one, that everybody, a good many people, are very aware of the, the problematic situation created for Americans overseas by FATCA legislation. Second of all, everybody is talking about tax reform, and they, they recognize the need for tax reform. It's not just our. I mean, our problem is a small element of the major issue in the United States. The United States tax code is, is just beyond limit. It's just out of range right now. Um, and... And when we talked about this solving our problem, and, and mainly what we think it will bring in more revenue to the United States, it will simplify the tax code, it will simplify the administration, it will allow U.S. companies to, to start once again to hire Americans to, to represent the nation overseas, uh, it will stop the penalization of Americans residing overseas. Uh, the whole list is just a win-win solution, mm -hmm. and and we we really had a very favorable response. Uh, this being said, we have no illusions. It's a very long, hard battle to get it integrated into legislation. All right. Well, on behalf of the American citizens living in Israel and myself, I want to thank you for fighting that battle for us. We've been talking to Jackie Bunyan, who is the director of American Citizens Abroad. Jackie, in the last few seconds, just tell people how can they continue to follow your work. Well, please go to our website, which is www.americansabroad.org. And I also strongly recommend people to write to their legislators uh, to, in, the, in the House of Representatives to try to support H.R. 597, which was introduced by Carolyn Maloney, which calls for a look, serious look into all of the issues uh, concerning Americans overseas. Okay, so Jackie, and I'd like to thank you very much, and I'd like to again thank you for having some of your other team members on the show. For people who missed any of those interviews, we also have transcriptions which were put into our top interviews of the Goldstein on Gelt show of 2012, so you can just get that at goldsteinongelt.com or, of course, hear any of the interviews from the past at YouTube. Look up Goldstein on Gelt. And, Jackie, your interview will be there as well uh, very soon. So I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time and wish you the best of luck. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.